Hi everyone, it's Kara here from Boho Berry, and I am coming to you today with a video all about handwriting, which is a question that I get asked a lot. And I really just started practicing my cursive back in November when I really started to get into fountain pens. And you can see here some of the fountain pens that I've collected already. I use these on a regular basis and they're just such a dream to write with when you're writing cursive that it really, really encourages me to practice more. And then I have my two everyday pens, which are my Faber-Castell Pitt Artist Pens. I use these in my bullet journal on a regular basis. They're nice and bold lines. But the first thing I wanted to show you is basically a sheet that I did for reference for myself when I'm trying to figure out how to write a letter because I'm still, like I said, still learning. It still takes me a little bit of time to write because I write pretty slowly just to make sure everything, I get everything right. So I have these sheets here that I did and this is all of my capital letters and you can see I just picked a style that I liked and went with it and wrote it over and over and over again. And I continued that on here. And that goes through all of my capitals. And then I did the same thing with my lowercase letters and just picked the style that I liked for each letter, added my own flair to it, and that's that. So that is all of my letters, my capital and lowercase letters. So I'm gonna make this sheet available as a printable for you all and I'll link that in the show notes below. But just keep that in mind as you're watching through the video that I will have that for you all later today. All right, so the first thing I wanted to talk about was my supplies. And a lot of people ask me what I use, how do I learn, how do I practice, etc. cetera. Um, so these are the supplies that I use. I use my fountain pens mainly to practice my handwriting, uh, writing pen pal letters, things like that. But this is a little sheet that I did to show how each of my fountain pens writes. And I should have put these in the correct order. Um, but this is my first pen that I ever got. It was my Pilot Metropolitan in a fine. And that's this one right here. And I have that inked up with Noodler's 54th Massachusetts right now. It's a really smooth writer. It's a great first pen. I think it's about $15 normally. So I love this pen. I write with it all the time. It writes super smooth, nice fine tip. The second one that I have is another Metropolitan. This is the second pen that I got. I got it because they came out with these gorgeous new colors. This is the Retro Pop in Turquoise. And I have that inked up with my Diamine Marine, which kind of matches the pen, which I love. The third fountain pen that I got was actually a gift for my birthday, and it was for my husband. And it's this Visconti Van Gogh in Irises. And this is a line that Visconti did modeled after Van Gogh's paintings. So this one matches up with the painting he did called Irises. So this is my favorite, favorite, favorite fountain pen. I love writing with it. It's super smooth. It's a fine tip, but it's actually a little bit thicker than my others. Then I bought myself this Twisby 580, which is an extra fine tip. It's black and rose gold, which they no longer produce anymore. So when they said that they found a box of the black and rose gold, I snatched one up immediately. Then I have the most recent purchase is my Noodler's Ahab. And this is a flex fountain pen. And you can see in my writing sample here how you can flex it out and get different line weights with your fountain pen. I have this synced up with Noodler's Apache Sunset, which is a really pretty shading ink. But this is one that I'm going to be using a lot to practice more um, kind of calligraphy style writing. And then the last two, which you've seen a bunch already, are my Faber-Castell Pitt Artist Pens. So I'll put those to the side for now. All right, so this is actually one of the things that I bought for myself in order to improve my handwriting. And what I first did when I decided I wanted to really get into cursive was I decided to pick a style that I wanted to learn and learn it inside out and stick with it 
until I really had it down pat and then I would branch out and learn other styles. So I chose Spencerian penmanship. I love the angle of it. I love the flourishes, although I haven't quite gotten there yet with my own handwriting, but you'll notice my handwriting looks a lot like this. I use that same kind of slant um, and I'll show you that when we get into my practice sheets. But this little set is available on Amazon and I'll link it below, but it comes with a theory book, which basically just walks you through all the different things like how to hold your pen, how to sit while you're writing, it walks you through drills and things like that. So it's a really cool little book. It teaches you about the composition of letters, et cetera, et cetera. Then the cool thing is it comes with these copy books. And this is something that would have been given to a student back in the day. I guess this was in the 1800s, I want to say. And as you can see, it basically is a bunch of practice sheets over and over. So it has you practice. This is the very first one. So you're really just getting a hang of the shapes. And you can see I've gone through quite a bit of this. Just practicing all the different shapes, how the letters are formed, how they go together. So that kind of gives you an idea. And then it moves on to get a little more complicated with each book. So this one, it goes into new shape patterns. I haven't gotten really far, obviously. <laughs> I haven't gotten even to book two, but it's a great way to practice. Um, book three goes a little bit more into actual words, how to write those. Book four goes more into different words and phrases and capital letters. And then book five goes into full on phrases. So it's a really cool little set. It's great for if you wanna just learn this style of handwriting, I definitely recommend it. But the biggest thing I can say is that you should try to figure out what style of handwriting you want to learn and find the resources available for that style and do your thing. So as far as supplies go, the other thing I wanted to note was my Rhodia dot pad. I absolutely love this dot pad. It's a dot grid, just like my bullet journals are, which is awesome because it really helps you with the slant and you can kind of get an idea shaping your letters all the same size, having the same slant to all of your letters. So really quick, I just wanted to go through a few of my practice sheets. Um, I've got a pretty good stack here. This is just from when I started practicing my handwriting. And basically all I do is I write. I write whatever I'm thinking of, whatever I can. I've got, these are poems. I've got random words down here at the bottom. You can see this is from when I first started practicing. My handwriting was just really not not there yet. All my letters weren't angled the same way. They weren't all the same size and shape. So through practice, I improved over time. This one, I was taking it really slow. You can see I was practicing writing a normal size, practicing writing large. And we've got more practice, more practice. But yeah, this is, I was dating them for a while and then I stopped dating them, but I do practice my handwriting every single day. This one right here is where I was trying to decide what capital letters I wanted to use and how I wanted them to look. So I just wrote out a bunch of capital letters in a bunch of different ways and tried to figure out which one I liked the best. So the ones that you see circled here are the ones that I ended up settling on. All right. And then I did my small letters. Um, after I settled on them actually and circled them, I went through and wrote down just all of my capital letters right there on one page so that I could have them for easy reference, although I haven't referenced them much. This is when I got one of my new pens. Let's see, more, this is book notes, quotes, poetry, uh, song lyrics, a quote by George Eliot. And then I got into this little kick where I was writing famous speeches. <laughs> so I have an excerpt from Coach Carter. I have an excerpt from Duty, Honor, and Country by General Douglas MacArthur. It's a great speech. I have a quote from 
Elizabeth Gilbert here that I really liked. That's not much. <laughs> I have more poetry, more poetry. And this, I was gonna write out the entire speech, Liberty or Death by Patrick Henry. And I made it to there and stopped. This would have filled up about five pages front and back. So I may go back and finish this actually, cause that was kind of fun. And then I started, this was common nouns. So there's a lot of lists online and I can direct you to where to find them. Um, but I'll put a link in the show notes below, but you can go on and find out the most common words and practice writing those words over and over again. So that's going to give you some good practice for words that you're going to write all of the time, which is pretty cool. Uh, so that just gives you an idea of what I write on my practice sheets and how I practice those. It's really nothing fancy y'all. I, <laughs> All I do is write. I write whatever I can, whatever I can find. Quotes, lyrics, that's all I do. I, I just practice, I just simply practice. Um, all right, so now I just wanted to kind of go through and show you how I do a little bit of my faux calligraphy, which is something I get questions on all the time. It's actually how I do my header titles in my bullet journal. And you can see here, this sheet up top, that is my faux calligraphy. So the concept of faux calligraphy is just to write in your regular cursive and then you thicken up the downstrokes and that makes it look like calligraphy. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. All right, so I'm just gonna go with my regular Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen. And let's see, what are we gonna write? Let's write one of my favorite quotes. I actually have this phrase tattooed on the inside of my arm. Now you'll see I'm writing a little bit bigger and a little bit wider than my normal handwriting. And the reason for that is I'm gonna come back in and thicken up my downstrokes and I want to make sure I have room to make those lines nice and thick. And this is a quote by Henry David Thoreau. And you can see I'm writing super slow here and it's a little bit shaky to be honest, but I wanted to go nice and slow so y'all could see what I'm doing. All right, so all good things are wild and free. Now, like I said, all you do is go down and thicken up your downstrokes. So wherever you pulled the pen down as you were writing, that's the part that you're gonna thicken. So I'm gonna go in here Pull down a little bit there, there, and you can take your time and make this super perfect. A lot of the time I just kind of do these little kind of sketchy lines and make it just look kind of loose. I kind of like the way that style looks. So that's what I do in most of my, most of my faux calligraphy. It's kind of sketchy like this. So can you see how that's changing the whole look of the letters? I'm just gonna continue on and remember that just where you drew your pen down. So here I was going up, down, up, down, up, down, I went back up, went back down. So hopefully you kind of get the idea here. And the cool thing about doing this too is you can kind of fix some of the wobbliness. 
from when you wrote it the first time. So if you have a, I don't really see, see one here, but if you have a funky line that kind of got distorted and out of shape, you can kind of fix that with this technique too, which is kind of neat. So again, just keeping with the downstrokes. And it's the same thing that you'll learn if you ever want to do brush lettering or calligraphy. All of those downstrokes are going to be the thicker lines. And brush lettering is something that I really want to get into soon. I do have a few brushes. I have some, I have some Tombow dual brush pens that are really cool that I've been trying to kind of practice and learn with. It definitely takes a little bit to get used to. So maybe if I get really good with those, I'll show you all how to do that too. But this, this is so simple y'all and I get compliments on my handwriting, my hand lettering, and my calligraphy all the time. And it really truly is one of the simplest things you can do. So you just take your cursive writing and you turn it into this faux calligraphy. All right, so there we go. All good things are wild and free. Um, another thing that you can do is to do this with your regular print handwriting. So let's say that we're writing, let's just do the same quote. What the heck? Good things all good things are wild and free so you could do the same thing now remember on the A you start up and you come down this just adds a little dimension. It makes your handwriting look like stylish, I guess. Um, so if you're ever looking to do any headers or titles or things like that, it's just a cool way to make your letters stand out and differentiate them from all the rest of the writing on the page. So you get the idea. And while we're on the topic of handwriting, I just wanted to tell you all, I'm definitely going to be doing a series and kind of going into each of these things individually a little bit more. So I hope that you'll stay tuned. I'm definitely going to be diving into both handwriting practice and uh, faux calligraphy, probably brush lettering when I get into that, but I'm also going to be diving into more the hand lettering side of things, which is more along the lines of drawing your letters rather than writing your letters. And hand lettering is something that I've really been getting into lately and I love, so I can't wait to share that with you. But hopefully this gave you a good overview of how I practice, what I like to do. I am going to link up a bunch of resources down in the description box for you and a lot of the websites and bloggers and Instagrammers out there that have inspired me along the way and other YouTubers as well. But yeah, I just basically wanted to do a general rundown for you and show you how I practice, what tools I use, and my methods, basically. And one last thing I wanted to talk about before I let you all go is that I've got a couple of new things happening over on the blog. One is I'm creating a Boho Berry free resource library. So anything that I offer as a printable or anything along those lines is going to be in that private section of my website. So I will link you to that in the description box below as well and give you more information on how to log in and see all of the freebies and printables that I've offered so far to date. Those are all going to be on my site from now on instead of in Google Docs where I've been keeping everything up until now. Also, next week I'm going to be doing my first Q&A. I get so many questions, so many questions all day long 
about all kinds of different things and it would literally take me all day to sit down and answer all these questions that I get. So I thought I'd compile a list throughout the week and come back on Friday and answer a bunch of your questions. So if you have any questions for me, I would absolutely love it if you'd leave them in the comments below and I'm going to compile a list throughout the week and then I'll come back on Friday and answer all of your questions or at least as many as I can get to in a reasonable amount of time. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned a little bit. Again, I will have all those resources linked below for you and I can't wait to see you again next week. Bye everyone.